Welcome to yet another episode of Maple and Coconuts. As you are aware, I am a banking professional in Canada, and my inbox is flooded with questions asking me if I did any course in Canada to secure a job in the banking industry, and can this course be done from India? So the answer to first question is that yes, I did a course in banking after coming to Canada. and of course you can do this course from india as well this course actually helped me to advance my career in the banking industry had i done this course from india it would have actually helped me to get an entry level job in the banking industry of canada now you must be wondering what this course is well the name of the course is canadian investment funds course instituted by the ifse So what is CIFC? So in this episode I am going to explain in detail how you can actually prepare for this exam and what are the benefits and who would be the beneficiaries of this course. So let's see what is CIFC. So if you are in India and planning to come to Canada as a student after completing BCom BA economics BBA or even after completing your MBA and still want to do one more post graduation in Canada you can try and explore this course and if you have this qualification banks will definitely consider you to work in various positions that actually requires CIFC qualified candidates in addition to that even engineers or even health professionals can do this course so that in the beginning when you come here you can actually find an entry level job with cifc you can actually become a mutual fund representative in canada this course can actually be done by students work permit holders people who are permanent residents i would recommend you to take this exam if you are planning to come to canada in the next 3 months because even if you clear this exam from india you actually need to show your presence in canada to get hired for a position that actually requires cifc so if you actually become a mutual fund representative your chance of getting hired for a position in the retail banking side of the banking industry is getting higher after clearing the cifc exam you can start applying for jobs in the customer contact center as bank teller and as associate financial advisors so when you actually start in the banking industry when you compare your experience with that of india you might have to actually start from a very entry level position but that doesn't matter the banks in canada actually promotes people in a very less time and that is a great advantage alternatively you can switch to other positions as well because i have seen people who have entered into the banking industry with the cifc course and progressed into careers such as it and other sides of banking now let me explain to you in detail more about the cifc course and how you can prepare for the exam so the overall course duration of cifc exam is 1 year and the suggested study time is 60 to 90 hours if you are not involved in any other activity and if you can devote entire one month for this course you can actually finish off this course in 30 days so if you are planning to do this course while you are working on an average on weekdays you just need to spend 2 hours or if you are planning to study on the weekends 5 hours of your time would be sufficient so that you know you can plan and write this exam let us look at the contents of the course so the contents of cifc exam 
are very very important to know about the Canadian economy. So if you actually want to perform very well in the Canadian banking industry, first you should know the fundamentals of the Canadian economy. Like in India, we have Reserve Bank of India, the Securities Exchange Board of India and various other regulators that actually controls the financial industry. So by doing this course, you will actually get an idea about the regulators that actually regulates the financial industry of Canada. This knowledge is important as a part of compliance and to do business in the banking industry. Now, based on my experience, let me explain to you how I prepared for this exam. So I was actually working when I registered for the CIFC course. So I dedicated my weekends to prepare for the exam. At first, I read all the units to basically understand the contents of the course. There are 11 units to be studied for this exam and each unit has its own weightage when it comes to the exam. Some units have less percentage of weightage and some units have more percentage of weightage. So what I did is that I regrouped these units based on the easiest ones and difficult ones. Now let me explain to you what are those units and how you can actually give importance and weightage. So this is actually based on how I have identified each units as the easy ones and difficult ones. So the very first unit is about the regulatory environment in Canada, which I have already explained in, the, in this video. The second unit is registrant responsibilities, which has 10 percentage of weightage. And the third one is suitability, which has nine percentage. Now the next one is economic factors and financial markets. You can do well in this unit if you have some fundamental knowledge about the economy and how it works. This unit has the lowest weightage among all the units that you need to study for this exam and it is only 6 percentage. Now the next one is type of investments. So type of investments has a weightage of 11 percentage and the next one is type of mutual funds which is very very important and also has a weightage of 11 percentage. The next one is portfolio management and it has 7 percentage of weightage. After that what comes is mutual funds administration which is 11 percentage. So if you actually group the ones with 11 percentage you can actually score 33 percentage out of the three units that has 11 percentage and actually the economic factors and financial markets are also quite easy. Along with that, 39% is assured for you. Now, the next unit after that is retirement and taxation, which has a combined weightage of 18%. This is very useful because you will come to know what are the retirement financial options available in Canada and how the Canadian tax market work. Now, the last unit has the highest weightage among all the units and the weightage for the last unit is 13 percent it is nothing but making recommendations so the last unit has a very practical approach when it comes to exams because you will be assessed where you will be given with a life where you will be given with a real life situation say for example if a person comes to you for an investment you will actually have to assess his risk taking capacity, his income and various other factors and how do you actually recommend him an investment product. This is really important as far as a retail banking branch is concerned. But if you really want to do well in unit 13, you have to be well versed in the other units because making a recommendation is based on whatever you have learned in the other units. So the regrouping 
has actually helped me to clear the exam. So now comes the day of exam. What I did to clear the exam. When you finish each unit, you have 10 multiple choice questions which will actually help you to clear the exam. When it comes to the exam, the answers will become questions and questions will become answers. That's how the CIFC exam is structured. Also, I purchased a question bank where it had 100 multiple choice questions and I practiced along with my regular course book. The exam is for 100 marks and you need to obtain 60 percentage to clear the exam. The total duration of the exam is 3 hours. Even though it is 3 hours, for certain questions you need some time to think and answer such as uh, the questions related to making recommendations. So overall, if you devote a substantial amount of your time for the practice of uh, the CIFC course, you can actually score very high marks in the exam. You can take this exam online and even if you fail in the first attempt, you needn't have to worry as there are three attempts to pass this exam in a year. Let's come to the course fee. The course price is actually 385 Canadian dollars. But I also purchased CY Learning Review and Practice where I had the question bank of multiple choice questions. So overall, it had cost me $500 to register for this course. I will also be sharing the link to review the course instituted by the IFSC you can find the link on the description. In addition to that, I would also recommend you to have a conversation with people who have actually completed this exam and who are working in the Canadian banking industry right now, which actually helps you to get more idea of how this course works. So we have people right from the bank teller to CEOs who have actually done this exam and have come out with flying colors. So friends, this is a very good course that you can do to get an entry level job in the banking industry. I wish all of you all the best. If you need any help with this course or if you have any questions related to the banking industry, you can reach out to me in the YouTube comments and I'll be happy to help you with your questions, concerns and comments. Thank you so much.